right, let's just uh, go over and I will show you the turning torso, which is sort of the street or city symbol of Malmö. Why drones in the open category with the C0 class identification label have a 120 meter hard height limit? The reasoning behind this is something that I would try to answer in this video that is shot from the side skirts of the roads in Malmö where I currently spend the weekend. Actually, this is quite relevant. And the reason I got inspired to make this video is because I have parked very close to the turning torso, which is basically the city trademark of Malmö. And you would definitely run into issues if you're trying to fly over that building. All drones in the open category must be operated within visual line of sight, meaning that you should be able to see the drone all the time. And they are also limited to operate below 120 meters. Drones with a class identification label has a built-in restriction that will limit the height from the takeoff point. However, under special circumstances, the remote operator is allowed to override this limitation and actually fly higher than the 120 meters. For example, only if you have an explicit request from an owner of an obstacle, like a building having a height more than 105 meters, to fly above it for some aerial work, maybe some inspections. Flying above 120 meters for leisure is not allowed. And it's not possible to override this limitation with a C0 drone. So the reason uh, behind that, according to EASA, was to simplify the operation with C0 drones and thereby have no training required. And because the pilot or the remote operator does not have any prior training, they might not be aware of the risk flying above 120 meters. And keeping VLOS of your drone might also cause some issues if you fly higher than 120 meters, especially with a smaller drone. All right, let's just uh, go over and I will show you the turning torso, which is sort of the street or city symbol of Malmö. It's a very, very sp <laughs> special building. <laughs> So the building is uh, 190 meters high and uh, it started the construction in uh, 2001 and it was completed by 2005 and it's actually turning 90 degrees from the base towards the top which gives it this really uh, kind of odd shape and um, it's named the turning torso so i guess it's inspired by like a human sort of turning the upper part of uh, the body but it's a, a very, very spectacular building. Of course, you're gonna fly an obstacle like this. You need permission, as uh, I just mentioned, from uh, the owner of the building to be able to do it. And then you need to keep in close proximity. I'm not even sure that you're allowed to fly here. I haven't checked it and I haven't brought the drones. So I'm not going to try it. I think this is a no-fly zone. We are very close to at least uh, the airports here and uh, in the surroundings. So I'm not sure that you can even do that. But um, this type of building, you would need permission to overfly it. It's 190 meters high. So, uh, yeah. Let's just run over the basics for C0 drone. So the EU drone regulations have been developed, defining requirements proportionate with the risk of operation and allowing some operations uh, to be conducted without any pre-authorization in the open category. And this will give you a lot of options uh, if, okay. <laughs> and this will give you a lot of options if you fly some of the liner drones below 250 grams as you will be allowed to fly and conduct operations without any prior training in the A1 airspace. For very small drones up to 250 grams, those can sometimes be considered as toys. Mm. However, most of the time they're actually quite sophisticated products capable of doing a lot of stuff. Just take a look at the mini series from DJI or similar products. So it was considered if the speed the drone could fly was not very high, below 19 meters per second, they pose a limited risk to people. However, in the case of an impact with an aircraft, especially small aircrafts or aircrafts that are lighter than smaller aircrafts like a hot air balloon, this might be dangerous based on investigations conducted by EASA. So in the A1 open subcategory, a major simplification was added when using a C0 drone. 
by having no requirements for training for remote pilots and no mandatory remote identification. This simplifies things a lot. However, such simplifications comes at a cost and one of them is the 120 meter hard height limit. If remote pilots are allowed using a C0 drone to unlock the system and fly higher without understanding the potential risk, which is given during the A1A3 online training, this has the potential to cause an accident. Also, a sub 250 gram drone has a very, very little footprint in the sky. So it, you might not even be able to see it when it's close to the 120 meter or even higher than the 120 meter limit. So I hope you can see that there's actually been put some thoughts behind introducing this 120 meter hard height limit to the drones. And I actually think it's very reasonable and it gives us a lot of flexibility flying these drones. You could argue that it will give some problems that it's measured from the takeoff point, which if you fly on a hillside, will put some serious limitations into how you can actually use the drone. But um, I'm kind of wondering if this will change anywhere in the future. At least us that are flying from relative flat surfaces, uh, we should not have any issues keeping us uh, below 120 meters. So just to summarize, when you're operating in the open category, you need to operate your drone below 120 meters. Such height limit may be overridden only if you have an explicit request from the owner of an obstacle. As an example, a building that is higher than 105 meters. Then you are allowed to fly above it to do some aerial work. Just note, C0 drones are excluded from this. If you have a legacy drone below 250 grams, capable of flying above 120 meters, you can fly higher than 120 meters if you have an explicit request from the obstacle owner. But it requires that you have completed the A1A3 competence certificate training. So I hope this brought some clarification into this 120 meter height limit that is being introduced here under the EASA EU drone regulations. You probably have a ton of questions about the new rules that are being effectuated from January 1st, 2024. Make sure to drop them below this video and then I'll make sure to follow up on these and try to answer as many of those questions as possible in a follow up video. I hope you liked this video. If you did, then feel free to give it a like. If you didn't like it, feel free to press the dislike button twice. Thank you for watching and I'll be seeing you around.